Maggie, are you excited for my documentary? <laughs> Hi there. My name is Grant Newkirk. I'm a director and producer, and part-time editor. Um, I have made some short films in the past, like my How to Use Your Fucking Turn Signal video. No, no, Tristan. Flick the bar up to signal a right turn. As well as my short film, Johnny. Don't follow me! Fuck you! Today I'll be making a documentary about making a documentary. My friend, Erica, is making a documentary about the Glen Sheen Mansion, and I figured I'd tag along and film my documentary. So, my documentary is going to be about her documentary. I know. I'm very creative. So, we're just going to show you all the different stuff it takes to make a documentary, and that maybe even you can make a documentary too. To make this shot, I basically had to clear a corner of my kitchen, try my best to keep all the different things out of the background, and make sure uh, my neighbors aren't clowning on me right now. <laughs> Cut to, um... I think mine's pretty nifty. So, okay. the script for the documentary is not as concise as the script for a drama. So the script might be kind of your voiceover that you know, but it's also it's your list of questions. You know, uh, USB file, whatever that. Anyway, this is the sure one. Well, it's in the notes. interior upstairs, interior downstairs. Each time you move the camera into a setup, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that that's listed. Okay, gotcha. And then I still need to do a shot list. Shot list, yeah. Yeah. This is fun. It feels frantic. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Teddy? Me. <laughs> the drive itself is also... It's two hours. Two and a half from my pair. I want to get there for sure by at least one. So I can go there early, talk to them, set up everything, scout the area and right. everything. So we have to leave. Let's leave it at like nine, just in case the roads get like kind of slushy, kind of okay. icy. I'm trying to think of different equipment we'll need. All right. I have SD cards. Me too. Two, say 100. Oh, sorry, I spelled 100. What else? Like, the stands for it. Oh, so much shit. Hey, did you know the um, photographers in Nat Geo are not allowed to do anything? What? Like, if they see someone starving, they're not allowed to feed them. Why not? Because they're photographers. So that's my excuse. <laughs> we are going to Duluth to see the Glen Sheen Mansion for my documentary. And Grant decided to do his because he was tagging along anyways. So. We're going to get gas. Yeah, so we're heading up to Duluth right now. We still got like two hours, right? Basically. Seem tired. Oh yeah. Did you get much sleep? Yeah. Me either. We're both very tired. We went to the school and we got all of our crap. Cameras, the lenses, equipment. And it's all in the back right now. There's a fucking lot of it. It's 918 and we're heading up to Duluth to meet with my crew. Connor said he wasn't going to be available until 2.30, and then Aiden might be home. So the plan is we go to Glen Shee, we do your documentary, we interview these people, we get some interior shots, some exterior shots. That's basically the day, and if we don't get it all done, we go tomorrow. So basically the husband murdered, who did he murder? He murdered, okay, so it was the mom of Elizabeth. 
this a full one. I got confused along the way. Wait, so but the guy... I'm pretty sure this is fairly accurate of what I'm telling you. Right. So ferret, make sure I'm right before you actually put it in. So you don't actually confuse people if we get the wrong information. Um, and then, so the guy, the husband actually did the murders and it was um, the mom of Elizabeth and it was the house Taker right. because she was sick at the time. Okay. So the nurse was the only one practically there taking care of her at night. Okay. So it all happened at night. And yeah. And so she, I can tell you how they. Oh my god, it's the Jesus d delivers. <gasps> yo! Oh, yo. Let's Jesus, get this right! Jesus! Jesus! Awesome. Okay, so she so, she was a witness. Basically, she would have been like a witness. She was there. She didn't want anyone calling, you know, the police and so, everything. So they were like, oh, let's just kill her. No witnesses. Yeah. So the whole story behind this mansion. They got caught anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Well, I mean, they murdered two people. It matters a little. Well, no, no, not that part. Like, I mean, I just don't. Why would you murder someone when you know you're going to get caught? Very few people in the history of everything have ever gotten away with murder. Well, the no. only recorded case. There was a case. reason why I said that. I just forgot now. Well, I mean, like. Don't put that in. The only recorded case of anyone not getting caught was Jack the Ripper, and that was because they didn't have any technology back then. They right. just didn't know what the fuck. If it wasn't cold out, this is a nice day. Or if it wasn't windy. I would yeah. Say. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, it's not too cold, it's the wind that's making everything cold. I know. Welcome to Minnesota, you're gonna hear that a lot. Like, the idea for this documentary is very foolproof, because it means no matter what happens, I'll still get footage. Yeah. Like, if, if Teddy or Mike, in their interviews don't show up, they might be screwed. And they might have to go with a backup, or they might have to fill in with some B-roll, some narration. Um, but me, no, I'm set. Welcome to the house that God has left. I hope you don't mind me filming. Filming my filth? And by my filth, I mean my roommate's filth? Yeah, we got The trash can is literally on the steps. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> It's like a filthy prank video. My life is a fucking filthy prank video. Good to see you, bud. So, Aiden, what's your name? Uh... What do your friends call you, Aiden? My friends would probably call me Aiden if I had friends. <laughs> <laughs> Who eats club crackers? Club are great. Fuck you. It's cold. I got socks, though. It's fine. Right here. My big warm socks. My fucking windshield doesn't defrost, so you have to sit there and scrape it while you drive, otherwise it freezes over. So what is hers? It's like, fucking dangerous. If it's sunny out, the window should be fine, I'll drive. Alright. Where's my wallet? But this is my dad's car bar and while he's in jail, but this is like a thousand times safer than the fucking van. I mean the van missing the in the door window, <laughs> only one tail light. The lights sometimes just randomly turn off, like the headlights will just like randomly go out and they won't come back on for a few hours. It's a fucking death trap. Oh, and last time I was driving it, I was driving up to Forest Lake and the hood popped open while I was on the freeway. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'll take the no heat meme over, uh, over that, but... Like most of Tom Clancy's books are about Irish terrorists. <laughs> Pretty much all of them. I don't know what he had against the IRA. He could have written about anyone. He could have. Even in the Cold War, like during the height of everyone hating the Russians, he's like, oh man, those fucking Irish. A group of IRA insurgents have taken over the U.S. Congress. They had a uh, mole planted in 2003 with Bush. <laughs> they used bombs made out of cheap plumbing supplies and nails.
to usurp the president. How are you not frozen right now, man? I'm used to this lifestyle. Who are you? Um, I'm a loser, mostly. I work a shitty job I hate. I live in a crappy, trash city because I can't afford to live anywhere else. The good life. Okay, I gotta remember to park facing the sun so that the windows stay melty. <laughs> This is how I have to drive every single day. That's good. That's good. We're almost there. How do we stop? <laughs> that way I can do some stealth vaping. This is my crew, folks. Uh, do we need the tripod? So what other buildings are there on the property besides just the mansion? So do you know all the names of the kids that they have? You said uh, I could talk a little bit about the murder, but just not focus on it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably just make a statement right. about that. That's fine. Um, the audio is still on, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was a little nervous, but... Hey, yeah. no! That, that works. You learn new things. I that I was an easy subject for you. Yeah, that was good. In the meantime, we can just take it with us. Yeah. Maybe I might set it up in a different location this time. Speaking of, we should give you a roll too. The C100 that you're holding, I really like that it has peaking because focus is hard to tell at a glance. So that yellow thing is great. I feel like I'm out of breath. <laughs> to the Pinball Museum and uh, the Pinball Hall of Fame in Las Vegas. They just wander around and play pinball machines and they have pinball machines dating back to like 1930, like. So it sounds like we're going to the second floor or third floor. Um, I can walk you up there. Last night I had a very good idea of keeping my E6 safe by putting it between my mattress and my box spring. Genius. Genius. Truly. Or are we gonna help film? Yeah. Fuck. Well, no coat, no coat. Hi, Connor Hobson. Executive producer on this film. I take my talking head very seriously, Grant. This has been my dream since I was a child. I used to always watch the History Channel, and they'd be like, Aliens are real. 2012 apocalypse is happening. And we're all gonna die. Um, no, but basically, the idea of a documentary is just so crazy to me. We're documenting life. This is going to be viewed by people a hundred years from now and they'll be like, wow, this is documenting someone documenting the life of a mansion, murder mansion. It's truly crazy to me. I <laughs> like how you're still in your fucking underwear, dude. said she w couldn't pick us up. Damn, Erica, how could you? This is ridiculous. This is an outrage. I'm the lead production assistant designer on the documentary about your documentary. A casting. I also do casting. <laughs> I casted it, and I can't believe you would cast us aside like a bunch of yesterday's trash. 
like a whole bunch of yesterday's trash and just cast us aside. It's crazy to me. When I heard we were making a documentary about a documentary, I knew I wanted a talking head. It was a dream I had. This documentary's not even about the murders. We're not even allowed to ask about them. It's the lamest shit. The murders are what makes the mansion cool. I don't want to go to some random ass mansion. Well, yes, I do, because like, mansions are sick. Up until the U of M took over. The whole thing was just about the murders, the whole tour was about the murders, and then now it's just like... If they're not gonna let us get murdered, then we're gonna bring the murder to them. Did you just threaten them? Because <laughs> <laughs> halfway through me driving up here, I was driving, everything was good. Joey texted me, simply, the car is now uninsured. And I was like, okay, thank you. Dad's car only heats up when you go like past 80 miles an hour. So on the drive to your, on the drive down to Forest Lake, I can get the windshield to like half thaw by the time I get to Forest Lake and get the temperature in the car from like 12 to like, I don't know. 21. <laughs> you should get some footage of us at McDonald's. Blowing off production. Blowing off production to go to McDonald's. The most important thing of every production is catering. This is true, she didn't feed us. She didn't feed us, no. She's, she actually is making me pay for half a tank of gas to come with her. Damn, son. Yeah, I drove to White Bear to meet up with her so we could go together. Instead of having her pick me up in Wouldn't Forest Lake. Wouldn't it made way more sense for you to get picked up in Forest Lake? Wouldn't it? Right? Because it's north. Because <laughs> it's literally anyway. on the way. Erica, you're getting shaded here. You better look out for that tall oak tree because you're getting some shade. <laughs> This documentary, this one that I'm in, terrible, terrible concept. Give me something interesting to work with, man. Um, we build our walls, and they're after they build us. What's that? What are you plans after this? Dane's got to work at five, so as long as we get something by that. Do you have a certain time you want to leave? Like probably around five. Five? Okay, oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, we need to split. There's like a lot of witnesses here. So that was... And you can show your documentary in class right after hers. That's actually what's going on. Now gonna... you get to hear the real story of the Glen <laughs> Sheen Mansion. That's and actually. The murders inside. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mine is playing after hers, so I could do that. Hi, I'm Grant Newkirk. <laughs> Hi, I'm Grant Newkirk. I'm... You already know who I am, I already did my intro. So what do you think about the murders? The murders were, there were murders at that mansion. What do you think about murder? It's bad. Next question. What do you think about the Glenshire mansion? Do you think that lady who guided us around and did the interview today was full of shit? No, she was probably telling the truth. <laughs> you think she had anything to do with the murder? No. <laughs> So today was the second day of shooting for the Glenn Sheen documentary. Aiden slept in and he was very groggy and tired. She got there before us and she didn't want to wait for us, so we showed up a little bit late. We got McDonald's. We're doing four chocolate, three chocolate chips no. no thanks. We were hungry, we needed food. We got food. It's fairly reasonable. <clears throat> Let me just do this inspirational speech and we'll wrap this documentary up. It's not necessarily about the film you make. It's about the filmsman who makes the films. The friendship, the memories, the dreams, the compassion, 
the emotions, the dignity, the honor, the McDonald's fast food we got. It's about these things. I learned a lot for the last three hours filming this documentary. I learned that sometimes it's not about the movie we make, it's the friends we make and the friends we keep. Aiden, Grant, Erica, Erica's friend. <laughs> that lady that we interviewed that I didn't really interview, but I sat behind filming. I didn't make any friends along the way. Overall, this experience was really good for me, uh, for the both of us, I think. I will carry on my knowledge from here. To describe my experience overall, I thought it went a lot better than I thought it would. I try to act confident as much as I can, but I feel like that's just something you're gonna always have to build up to. For anyone who wants to make a documentary, always just be prepared 110% before going into meetings and interviews and all that. I would say always do your research ahead of time your production book, have that with you at all times so you know what you want and need. It's always good to have your backups, extra batteries, extra SD cards, extra equipment. If you're gonna take a road trip up to a place, always make sure your car is fine, tires, oil, everything is okay. Give water to your crew, be prepared. I think it's definitely okay to make mistakes. Obviously, as a first time documentary filmmaker, or just in general with anything, you're always gonna make mistakes. Then you learn from your mistakes. Don't feel too bad about yourself. Don't get down on yourself. And just know that it's just gonna get better from that.